Okay, so first we have like cybersecurity training programs, like uh, giving training to the employees because it is the responsibility of each and every employee of the organization to uh, to uh, take the responsibility of the security. Then we have updating software, okay, uh, to fix the prior bugs. Then we have the PEM, like uh, privileged access management. It is like uh, uh, to give the permission on uh, to only the authorized person to uh, access the uh, access the data, like the secret data. And then we have the multi-factor access authentication. It is uh, similar to like two-step verification. Okay. Then we have the dynamic data backup, like uh, backup in your uh, data at different different places. So that we see security training, which involves like network security, which is related to network. Then application security, application security like uh, taking security, uh, like the managing the security of your apps, where, uh, whether it is iOS or Android. Okay, then uh, we have information security. Okay, like uh, using tools and techniques to uh, to protect some data. Okay, or to protect some system. Then with the endpoint security, endpoint security involves your PC, your endpoint devices like a PC, your mobiles, your uh, routers. Okay. Okay, then we have the internet security, uh, like uh, secure yourself over the internet. Then we have the web security, like securing yourself, uh, your websites, where your web applications, then system security and physical security. Okay, then physical security is like securing yourself from being manipulated by the attacker. Uh, means being uh, uh, like securing yourself from social engineering attacks. Okay, then we see cloud security, uh, so like securing your cloud data and then malware security securing yourself from viruses like trojans red okay then we have the then we have discussed cryptography now as a whole cryptography means securing your data from malicious hackers okay means cryptography means securing your data from malicious hacker which involves different different techniques that is like encryption digital signatures hashing etc okay so we achieve uh, we achieve security cryptography by providing encryption authentication and integrity again encryption is like converting a plain test into cipher test okay then we have the authentication like uh, it is like proving one's identity okay then we have the integrity which means like ensuring that the receiver that uh, like uh, your data is not modified in the middle by transmitting on your uh, like from server to receiver then we discuss the objectives of security again we have confidentiality Okay, that ensuring no one can read your uh, data. Then integrity. Okay, your data is not has not been modified in the middle. Then uh, availability, like proving one's identity. Okay, then your non reputation. It is like uh, to ensure that the sender really sent the message. Like it is similar to authenticity. Okay, then we see the uh, vaccine techniques uh, which invo involves encryption. Okay, then digital signature, hash function, converting your plain test into hash algorithms. Uh, hash functions uh, work uh, using the uh, by generating using the hashing algorithms. Then uh, we are seeing digital signatures. Uh, it generates the electronic signature, which is which is generated by the mathematical algorithms routinely. Okay, like after a particular period of time, to ensure to ensure your uh, authenticity. Then we have the types of encryptions systematic and uh, asystematic encryption okay so systematic means it uses a uh, single key okay like the sender uh, it uses a, a single key the, se uh, the sender encrypts the message with the same key and the receiver decrypts the message with the same key in asymmetric uh, encryption there are two keys each party set the like the a sender have, uh, have two keys like uh, the private key and the uh, public key and the receiver had uh, two keys like the uh, private and public key so the sender encrypts the message with the receiver's public key and the receiver decrypts the message with its own uh, private key okay so yesterday there uh, there, uh, there was a question how, how private key and public key generate in asymmetric uh, encryption so I repeat how in private and public key generate in asymmetric uh, encryption. So the private and uh, public key is generated not by us. It is generated by the software we are using. Suppose, okay, you have seen WhatsApp. 
Okay, so there is a mention that end to end encryption. Okay, which means the software uh, we are using the WhatsApp, basically an app or a piece of software. Okay, piece of code. So it is the responsibility of the uh, responsibility of the WhatsApp to encrypt your uh, messages and uh, and decrypt your messages. So it is the code which provides you the private and public key to the WhatsApp. Okay, so it is not a responsibility to like to generate private and public key. Okay, then there's another another, another question. How sender will know that uh, private key generated by the receiver is authentic person? Again, I see. I said C. Suppose this is a sender and this is a receiver. Okay. And they are transmitting messages. Now, sender send, uh, sending some kind of message. Let's say hi. Okay. So both parties have uh, private and public. So public key and private key. Again, the receiver have public key and private key. Okay, so this message hi encrypts using the receiver's public key. So the, the sender encrypts the message using the receiver's public key, and then it uh, when it reaches to the destination. The receiver decrypts it using uh, using its uh, private key. Okay, so so uh, if the sender is like encrypting the key uh, the message using the public key of the receiver, then obviously it is the responsibility of the receiver to uh, or it is uh, it is mandatory to uh, or it is only decrypted using the receiver's public key. Okay, the sender cannot encrypts this message using its own public key or its own private key. Okay. It will only encrypt it using the public key and the receiver decrypts it using the private key. Okay. I hope this is uh, clear. Then we will discuss hashing. Hash, uh, hashing is like converting a plain test into hexadecimal form format. Hexadecimal is like combination of characters and numbers. Okay. Then we have stenography. It is like hiding your data into a like into a some non uh, like ordinary file. Like uh, we can say that it is it can be of image, it can be of uh, like uh, file of messages. Okay. Okay. Now we allow we have discussed two of trade, which is like OS utilities. Okay, so utilities like. Uh, helps to maintain the proper and smooth functioning of a computer system. Okay, so we have discussed the uh, Linux utilities, Telnet, uh, Shell, WCAT, Telnet, MAN, Apache Web Server. Okay, then we had uh, Windows utilities, antivirus, uh, file management system, compression tools, disk management tools, disk cleanup, and then backup utility. Okay, then we have seen network scanners, Fireshark, NMAP, ZenMap. Next search, angry IP scanner, pink, preset, ARP scan, and net discover. Now we have the protocol analyzers. So we have Wireshark, Ethercap, and TCP dump. So let's see it. Open your virtual machine.
Okay, so go ahead, Shad. So yesterday we discussed why Shad is a powerful tool. Okay. Like a Wireshark is a tool which is used to monitor your packets, okay, or analyze your packets. So we can analyze the protocols, we can anal analyze your uh, packets, we can analyze what is happening in your network. Okay, so it is the most powerful tool which is used in networking and security. Okay. Okay, so let's interface and see, we have the different different uh, messages and we are using the protocols. I, okay, ARP, ICMP version 6. So this is used for the protocol analysis. Then we have the TCP dump. Okay. So put sudo, we put it. So this TCP dump is also like a Wireshark, which is used to capture your packets. Okay, and you can also see your uh, protocols here. Okay, like UDP. Okay, so this is all about TCP. The both are used for. Okay, now we have EtherCAP. So this is an interface of the EtherCAP. Okay, so select your interface and it start capturing. See, this will show you all the list of your uh, host devices which are connected to the network. Okay, then you can click on search. This will identify your or scan your whole network. Okay, and uh, shows you all your IP addresses which are connected to the network. Okay, either cap is mainly used in the man in the middle attack. Okay. Okay, it is mainly used in the manual middle attack, that will MITM. Then we say, uh, like talked about integrity. So, either cap is responsible for uh, changing your packets. Like when you say that uh, we are ensuring that uh, our packet is not being modified, okay, in the middle. So, how come a packet can, uh, how come I, a hacker can catch your packet and modify it. So this will uh, like uh, he, this will actually be uh, with the help of the EtherCAP. Okay, EtherCAP and Wireshark. So EtherCAP captures your packet. Uh, uh, it can read it and can modify it. Even web suit also is responsible for modifying the packet uh, packet in the middle. Okay. Then we had logs. Okay, so log are, uh, logs are it contain detailed list of an application information system for uh, performance or user activities. Okay, a log can be used for keeping track of computer use, emergency recovery, and application improvement. It is the automatically produced and time stamped documentation of events relevant to a particular system. Okay, so now we have logs, which is basically uh, just a list. Even a, means a powerful list which contains all your activities that you are like uh, performing on, the, on your system. Okay. Means each and every activities you are performing is recording on your on, on this system. Whether you are logging to the system, whether you are uh, like uh, opening any website, whether you are like performing any uh, opening any software. Okay, these all are like uh, like recording your logs. Okay, so it uh, it so it will keep it keeps track of of all your activities. Okay, 
Now, where do lux come from? Like it, it comes from like apps, whether you install an app or you open a particular app, your databases, your firewalls, okay, your endpoints, your devices, your IoT devices, Internet of Things devices, your networks, okay, and your servers and your web services. Okay, web services in the sense uh, which website you are currently opening, okay, which website you are mostly visiting. So servers, and then we have the networks, okay. Then uh, we have different types of logs. That is event logs, server logs, system logs, authorization logs, and access logs, change logs, availability logs, resource logs, and thread logs. Okay, so there are different different types of logs, which is uh, depend totally depend on the application or the or the or the concept of phenomena he was using. Okay. Then we have the where are the logs stored in a in a different different OS. So in Linux, it is stored in where log. Means you can go through your logs in your system. Where and log is a folder or directory. Log open it, then you can see your all your logs. Okay. Then in Windows, it is storing event view. You can search for event view, then open it. Then there are different different types of log, Windows log, application log, security log, setup logs. System logs, okay. Then you have the saved logs, okay. These all are your logs. You can go through from here. And in Mac, it will store in where log and then library logs, okay. In where log, uh, there's your system logs and in library logs, there, uh, there are there are your uh, other types of logs, okay. So this is all about the use of trade. So I think this is clear. If there is any query, kindly mention it. If there is any query, kindly mention it. Okay. Now we have the securing the systems. So there are different different types of attack. Okay. So there are different different types of attack. Like uh, we have okay. We have a number of attacks. And every year, your uh, the uh, like will let me show you. So uh, this is a website, Ovax. Uh, if we keep track of all the like all the attacks that are happen, like that are performed every year. Okay. So yeah. Uh, so, uh, on the number one, it is broken access control and cryptographic failures, injections. Uh, it is related to SQL injection, inject, uh, injections. 94% of uh, the injections, like uh, the attacker perform every year. Okay. Then we have the insecure design, security misconfigurations, vulnerable and outdated components, and we have the authentication failures, software and data integrity failures, and then security login and monitoring failures. Okay. And server side request forgery. Okay. So these are these all are, these are the types of attack. That is like uh, it happened every year. Okay, so over top 10 keeps the record of uh, of all these record, uh, attacks. Okay, so, uh, and other records, we have the denial of service records attacks. So, denial of service attack is an attack made to shut down a machine or a network, making it inaccessible to its intended users by accomplishing this by the flooding the target traffic. So, basically, we have. DOS attack that is and denial of service. Then we DDoS, the DOS attack. Okay, DOS DOS, uh, DOS is like a denial of service, and DDoS is like a distributed denial of service attack. Okay, so in DOS.
Okay, suppose there is a server. Okay. This is your server where the website is hosted and there is a system, a PC. Okay, so each and every server has the like limitations to uh, handle the request. Okay, suppose this server has the like capacity to handle 100 requests at a time. Okay, but you as an attacker, sending the 200 requests at a time, okay, to the server. And the server has the capacity to handle like 100 requests. Okay. So, this will lead to the server uh, either to slow down or your server will like crash. Sometimes, this the server has the capacity to handle 100 requests and you are sending the 200 request so the server uh, this will lead the server to slow down or uh, it will crash so this is the ddos and uh, dos attack and in ddos okay this is the dos attack in, D, uh, in ddos you are using the multiple computers okay for attacking here in dos attack you are using your own computer or own pc means a single computer and in ddos you are using the multiple systems for sending the multiple request. Okay. These all are sending the request at the same time. Okay. So this is a DDoS attack. We are use multiple systems for attacking a particular server. Okay, and here in DOS attack, you are using a single computer, single PC or single system. Okay. Okay, so this is about DOS and DDoS. Okay, now we have the host threads. Host means the system and threads mean the attack. Okay, so in host thread, refers to the attack on a specific system in an attempt to gain access to the information that resides on the system. Okay, means basically. Post thread is like attacking, uh, attacking, uh, attacking a particular system. Or account. Okay. It can be either achieved by using So host thread is like attacking a particular system or account. Okay, like using uh, mainly by using token as authentication, brute forcing attack, or maybe different different types of injections, like SQL injections, cross-site scripting injections, etc. Then we have manager middle. As I discussed, like it is responsible for performing the manager middle. It is like. So, there is a sender and a receiver, and they are transmitting a message. We have the sender and we then we have the receiver. Okay, sender transmitting the message, let's say hi. Okay, and here in the middle. Here's the attacker. 
So we it's the header. Okay. So when you are transmitting a message, hi. Okay. To the receiver. So, uh, so in the middle, the hacker captures your packet. Okay, it captures your packet, and either it can read it, he can, he or she can read it, modify it, or even he or she can drop it. So, this is the like uh, it like uh, this is the man in the middle attack. We are an attacker or an hacker sits in the middle of you and the router, or you or you and your receiver. Where he or she can send, uh, see your message, read, read your message. And they like modify it or even drop it. Okay, so this is the man in the middle attack. Then if the and the goal of an attack is to steal your information, you are logging to credentials, your uh, account details, and credit card numbers. So So it is always unsafe to log in with, uh, with the HTTP request. I will show you why it is like dangerous to log in with your HTTP request. Okay, because there is a HTTP and HTTPS. I hope you heard it. Okay, HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and uh, HTTPS stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. Okay, so here in HTTPS, S stands for SSL certificate. Okay. And SSL stands for secure socket layer. Okay. So these are HTTP and HTTPS. HTTP is uh, unsecure, which means So HTTP don't provide like uh, encryption. Okay, so HTTP doesn't provide encryption and HTTPS provides encryption. So this is a basic difference between HTTP and HTTPS. Here S stands for SSL certificate. SSL means secure, so, uh, secure socket layer, which helps to encrypt your uh, data or message. Okay, let's see it. How it is dangerous to log in your username and password. Okay, let's suppose open one shot. Okay. Select to interface and then minimize it. Then open five things and browser. Okay, so let's say you have a website which works on HTTP. Okay, suppose. Okay, so here's your website and it works on HTTP. Okay, so type your 
username suppose admin password one two three four five okay then login then not save minimize it okay before that let's find the ip of this website by ping it okay so this is the ip of the website where we can apply it in the filters now if a attacker uh, sits in the middle of you and your receiver then he or she can seize your password or can read or modify your username and password let's try it. So here's your IP. Okay. Okay, so let's select this. So expand this and see here's your username, admin, and your pass. So this is how it is dangerous to log in with your username and password on HTTP request. Okay. Uh, your username and password is in clear text. I hope this much is clear. Okay. So we have the malware. Malware is known as malicious software. Malware is, is nothing, it, uh, it is like just a piece of code or, uh, or it is a script. Okay. Which can infect your system. Okay. So now we have the malware. Okay, so we have the malware, which is just a piece of code, or we can say that uh, there are different types of malware. We have Trojans, we have Red. We have ransomware, okay, etc. So basically, malware infects your system. Uh, it you uh, it can okay. It can steal your information. It can damage your system. Okay, it can damage your system or uh, okay, even it can modify your data and uh, and it can keep track of yourself where you are going, what uh, what you are currently doing. It can open your webcam. It can like uh, take your screenshot of of your like of your screen. So a malware can do anything. Okay. Now we have disk encryption. Encryption, you know, like converting a plain test into cyber uh, cipher test means converting your data into uh, something a data attacker cannot understand. Okay, if he or she can manage to read it, but uh, he, or it cannot be understood by the by him. Okay, then this encryption is a technology which protects your information by converting it in into unreadable code that cannot be deciphered uh, easily by unauthorized people. This uh, encryption uses disk encryption software or hardware to encrypt every bit of data that goes on disk or disk volume. So basically. Disk encryption is like encrypting a whole disk, even bit by bit. Okay, this is all like, and uh, here you have to use your external software, okay, for encrypting your disk.
then we have the ideas in IPAs. So IBS is like intrusion, uh, intrusion detection system and IPR is like intrusion prevention system. So in IDS, okay, so IDS only detects your malware or any malicious activity and IPS detects it. and blocks it or we can say that it, uh, it tries to fix it okay so ids and ips so it's designed to only provide an alert about a potential incident or potential attack okay which enables the security operations center soc analyst to investigate the event and determine whether it requires further action or not Okay, means IDS first detect your potential uh, incident, your attack, and then it to, uh, like informs to the SOC team, which you now which can now further investigate investigate it. Then we have the IPS. On the other hand, it take action itself by blocking the uh, like the attack. Okay. So this is our system, uh, securing the systems. Okay. So we have discussed in DOS attack, post threat, man in the middle, malwares. Is in uh, this encryption IDS and IPS. Okay, so how we can like uh, secure our system from DOS attack? We can use load balancer. Load balancer is like. Uh, <coughs> Okay, so the load balancer, they, uh, they will balance your request by blocking the extra number of requests. Okay. Then we have the host thread. We can use uh, like two-step verification to ensure uh, to like ensure our login credentials. Then with the man in the middle attack. We, have, we can use uh, encryption, hashing, okay, and digital signatures. To avoid um, when the middle attack, then with the malware, you can use antiviruses. Okay, for uh, protect us from, uh, and we can use file, uh, firewalls, and uh, even we have Windows Defender systems to protect us from malware. Okay. Then for this condition, we have to use the external software, IDS and uh, IPS. They are itself the prevention methods. So this is all about the security systems. Now we have the, I hope so just clear, if there's any doubt, kindly mention it. If this much is clear, kindly mention it. Or if you have any queries.
Okay. Now session two, we have the enumeration and information gathering. So let's understand. Okay. Let's, let's understand the difference between, uh, between hacking and digital hacking. Hacking is like attacking a system in an illegal way. And the ethical hacking is like attacking a system in an illegal way. Okay. So hacking is the process of identifying system reports or vulnerabilities to gain unauthorized access. While ethical hacking, uh, it, is, it refers to a process of finding vulnerabilities or loopholes in the computer system or a network by replicating the actions of a malicious hacker, means by mimicking the actions of a uh, malicious hacker. So hacking, in terms of Then we have the ethical hacking. Okay, now there is a phrases of hacking. Okay, which involves information gathering. Okay, then information gathering, scanning. Gaining access. Maintaining uses and then clearing traces. Okay, so we have five uh, like first step in traces of hacking. First, we have information gathering. Okay, then scanning, gaining access. Information gathering is like uh, if you're targeting a system, then before targeting, you have to gather some information about the system, like uh, the IP address, the work ports, the MAC address, etc. Then we have the scanning phase in which you have to find the loopholes. If if any system or if the target has any has any loophole or not. Okay, on the basis of the loophole or vulnerability, we is uh, we gain the gain the system. Okay, then we have maintaining phases. We maintain the system like we can maintain the access by let's say by using backdoors. Okay, then we have the clearing traces. Like clear, uh, clearing your tracks. Okay, so information gathering. And information. Okay. So information can be performed by actively and passively. Okay, I think this like uh, directly and passively is like indirectly. Okay, so actively is like directly and passively is like indirectly. 
directly means in indirectly. Okay, so actively is like making contact uh, directly with the target. Okay, like uh, asking his own, uh, like chatting him with uh, his with him, or like uh, scanning its network with the help and map by using ping. Okay, and then passively is like in, uh, indirect, indirectly like stalking him, asking someone uh, about him, him or her. Okay, this is like indirectly without knowing, uh, like without. Getting known by the uh, target. So, so where does the like enumeration fit in this? Enumeration is like Okay, it is like the next step of information gathering. Means gathering the higher information or like the more advanced information about a target, like the codes, usernames, or we can say the host names. Okay. So, like the group's name, host name, network shares, and services, IP tables, and routing tables, service. Settings and audit configurations, applications in manners, SMP and DNS details. Okay. So, enumeration is defined as a process which establishes an active connection to the target host to, the, uh, to discover potential attack vectors in the system, and the same can be used for further exploitation of the system. So, enumeration comes middle, uh, comes in middle, like in information gathering and, uh, and scanning. And then scanning. Okay, annotation is like the finding the information which we can use in the scanning process. Okay, to find the loopholes or vulnerabilities, and then with the uh, loopholes we can exploit a system or uh, exploit a target system. Okay, so we have various tools for annotation, even for information gathering, like uh, we have what web, webplizer. Okay. You like applizer. Okay, build with you get signal OSINT. Okay. So let's see one by one. OSINT. So it is a framework. Search for OSINT and open the OSINT. OSINT framework. So here we have been various tools like for the username, you can go to username search engines like uh, name check, name checker, user search.org, what my name. Okay, then for email address, we have different tools and then we have the custom tools of it. Okay, then for the IP addresses, we have the geolocation. Okay, then we have the so for geolocation. Then we post discovery. Okay. okay. For images and videos, we have and for social sites like uh, such of the social sites like Facebook, Twitter, Reddit. Okay. So this is all the combination of tools inside the OSIN framework. We can like gather as much information. Okay. But if your target is anonymous in the internet, so it is of no use of finding the information uh, using the OSINT framework. Okay, I will not dark web, general info, clients, and all. Okay.
then we have the web laser. Okay, let's search for. Suppose let's go to Amazon. Okay, then yes, we have the web laser. Weblizer is a tool which shows you uh, the technologies from which the website is made of. Okay, like uh, uh, the, uh, Amazon uses Code JS, jQuery. Okay, Amazon Web Services, etc. Okay, so Weblizer shows you or displays the technologies. Okay, then we have the build bit. So it is a more advanced version of the weaponizer. Okay, so it, this is a CLI code. CLI we do. See it? Okay, it is more Kali. Okay, then we have to very simple. Which is used for reverse IP lookup. Then you have to DNS monster. All DNS records. Okay. Then we have the showdown. It is a search engine. Okay. Then we have the CRT.sh. It is the, uh, it is used for uh, subdomain of the particular website. Okay, then we have IP stack and then IP tracer. These are uh, these are used to track the geolocation of the web uh, of an IP. Okay, let's see you get signal. Okay. In a browser. But for you, get the signal. Okay, here you will see uh, reverse IP lookup. Got it? And your iPhone. Let's say.
See, because IP lookup checks uh, checks your domains on a host on the same web server. Okay, means. We have web servers, okay. which is is to store or host your websites. Okay, we have web servers like Okay, we have dedicated servers or shared servers. Dedicated is like a personal servers of an organization. It's shared servers is like a server which hosted many websites. Okay. So. So basically, a website can store on more than one, one server. Okay. So. Like uh, I just remember. Okay, so our website can store on more than one server. Okay, and a subdomain of a same website can be stored on different servers. Means, how can a website can store on more than one server? Because we know website means combination of web pages, and web pages like suppose we have ten web pages. Okay, so five are stored on uh, on different server number one, and five five web pages are stored store on different number uh, different web servers. Okay. So the second point is a subdomain. Okay, so a subdomain of same website can be stored on different servers. Now what is subdomain? Say We have this IP, like uh, okay. So this is the subdomain, and this is a domain. Okay. This is subdomain. And this is domain. Okay. So our subdomain of same website can be stored on different different servers. So, so what we can do is like find different IP of the same shared server to enter the server. Like we have done dedicated servers, we cannot like undo anything with the dedicated servers. But if we can do uh, like many things with the shared server, suppose we have website number one and we have website number two, and we want to have website number two. Okay. But we are not able to like we didn't able to find uh, any loophole or vulnerability or any entry point to hack a website number two. So, but website one and website two both are hosted on the server number one. Okay, they are they both are hosted on server number one. So what we can do? We can is start scanning the website number one and can, and if if we find uh, like if we find any vulnerability or loopholes in website number one. So we can enter through website number one in the server and then we can like hack the website number two. Okay, so this is like the disadvantage of using a shared server because many websites are hosted on the shared server. And if you want to hack the website number two, and the website number two is like, like more secure, 
So, and we are like, we are not able to find any loophole in, in website number two. So what we can do, we can like scan the website number two by using the reverse IP. And we, and we can find the, all the IPs which are stored in server number one. Okay, then we can, uh, using this IP, we can hack the website number one and then we can enter in the server. And when we enter in the server, we can hack the website number two. Okay. Uh, this much is clear. So there is a there are like many ways to ha uh, hack a particular system or or website or network. Okay, you only need to find a way out. Okay, so now let's take a break. Okay. Okay, so uh, we will continue at 11 team results. Okay, so guys, let's begin to Okay. Yeah, for network architecture, we have like a solar winds, internet mapper, blue switch chart. Okay, even we have Cisco uh, packet tracer. Okay. Okay, so we have our So for information gathering, we have OSINT, Webilizer, okay. Okay, so we have most powerful information gathering tools that is like OSINT, WebLaser, Wilbeck. Okay, then we have Shodan, IP Tracer, IP Stack, you get signal. Okay, then we have uh, CRT.sh, which is used to check subdomain of a particular website and DNS register for DNS records, Dimitri. Okay, subregister, Dub, and then Net Discover, what web. Okay, what web is like WebLaser. Net discover, okay, then NMAP, Metasploit, or Entry Set. 
so uh, why we have like different different uh, tools for information gathering because we uh, all the tools are means not all the tools are reliable so we, uh, so we have to we means we don't have to depend on a particular type of tool okay so we have to use different different types of tools for information gathering means you, uh, we have to use webpilizer and what web for both the, for, uh, for both to gather the technologies okay excuse me you talk about solar ones Okay, so let's try it. Web laser. Search for uh, search for web laser. Chrome extension. Chrome Firefox uh, extension. Okay. Then search on it. Click on it. Okay, and then add, uh, add for Chrome. Okay, then you can see in extensions here. You can ping it. Yeah. So let's go website like this card. Okay. See, click on web laser and you can see all the technologies of the flip card. Like technology which are made of. Okay. Google Ads, Red, Nginx. Okay. Then we have the hot web. What web is a CLI tool? Is what method? See, it will shows you the uh, arguments which you can use it uh, with what we have. Okay, so what we have to do is clear this screen. What we have. And then name of any website. Let's say open let us call me. Thank you. 
ओके इन वर्ड वेब है आईपी ऑफ द मशीन ऑफ योर टारगेट मशीन आई एम यूजिंग वर्चुअल मशीन मेट्रस प्लॉटिबल ओके देन मेट्रस प्लॉटिबल यूज अपाची ओके विजाउट एस टी डी पी सर्वर अपाची वर्जन ऑफ द अपाची ओके आई पी एन एन पी एच पी एंड टाइटल मेट्रस प्लॉटिबल लाइन एक्स ओके एंड देन वी है क्रोम एक्सटेंशन You can add it from here. Then let's go some to any website. Then we have the cable here. So it will shows you the detail like detail type of technologies which are which are current your target is using. Okay. So here are all the technologies. So with the help of the technologies, you can exploit any system. Like suppose. Your target are you? Your target is using Apache, which is let's say server four point four. Okay. So if four point four is an old version, so you can exploit it on the basis of that old version. Okay. So this is about like find the technologies your target is using. Okay. This is another website. कॉमन ओके कॉमन वन वन डिसेंट एक्सपोजर सी बी ओके यू कैन फाइंड एनी लाइक कैन स्क्रिप्ट सी बी इज लाइक द स्क्रिप्ट Which are used to ah uh, like exploit a particular website or particular technology. Okay, you can search here. Search CV list. Okay, you can download it from here. Update a CV record. Okay, and you can request it. Even you can search for. CVE Apache to suppose CVE okay and so so it will show all all the CVE okay, which you can use to exploit the different different versions of Apache server. For the exploitation, we have a dispert. Okay, so for my dispert, MSF control. Okay, so here you can also search for the um, CVEs. Search any name of a uh, technology. Let's say Apache. So it will list all the CVEs or all the exploit uh, scripts. Uh, so you can use it with the technologies to exploit them. 
we have Apache exploit uh, and here the rank which is excellent we, uh, it is like uh, the powerful CVE okay then check and then description of it okay and then disclose a date okay then you should have should have extension number group okay should have so then you can add it from here and then it's good click on click on here second it will like uh, shows you the ip address and the host name okay and the country and the open ports 80 and it, uh, 84 http and 443 http okay and we discuss, uh, discussed uh, like uh, ports are the open ports are the entry point okay for an attack so you can scan it like this then we have the ip tracer some tools are reliable and some tools are not reliable so we have to use multiple tools to, uh, to gather the information if you take her and and track IP. Okay, so it will show you the geolocation of the IP, of the server IP. Okay, then we have NMAP. And then, let's say you are, well, you want to scan this machine. Then, if it's as for scan, okay. Then I can go for the system and the IP of the machine. Yes, the IP of my machine. Okay then. So this way open the scan uh, open books, the IP and the operating system of the targeting machine. See, so we have open ports, FTP, SSH, Telnet, SMTP. Okay, so by scanning these ports, we can like enter from uh, from these ports by exploiting these ports. Okay. Then we have reset and pink. Okay, let us run net, net discover. Yeah. We have done. So it will um, force the diagram. Let's say IP is free to be. 
and uh, uh, and So, this is the IP and this is the path where common.txt uh, common is located. Common.txt is a root for, is a uh, like a list which contains domains. See it, word filter and uh, file system, user, share. Word list and then down here is a counter test key. Okay, it will contain all the list of your directories which you can use for root forcing. Okay, and minimize it and enter. So it will start root forcing the directory. See, this might target a CGI bin. We have indexed with PHP, okay. PHP info, okay. If you want to save this result in a particular file, so space and the name of the file. Say um, file.txt. Okay, enter. So call it file.txt. Yeah, here is your file.txt. Okay. It will uh, save your output in the file. It is still going on. Okay. So I hope this is much is clear. Then we have. Okay, so this will like uh, shows you all the subdomain of a particular website. Let's say IP. Okay. Then search. Okay, let's say Google Java.
basically shows you all the subdomain that Google uses, like um, mail.google.com, accounts.google.com, adverts. Okay. Okay. Okay, then we will get signal. A, C. We will say to look up. We will put it right here. And do it. CBF 77 hosted on the uh, domains hosted on the same web server. Okay. Then we have DNS in the store. Okay. So. Shows the DNS and forms. Okay, then we do it. And then we have look at the list. Who's the lookup? Click on it. Okay, so I think the question of a particular target. Okay. Domain name, domain ID, okay, so, register server, URL. Okay. So this is about enumeration tools and techniques. Is it clear? Okay, so we have different different operating system. So in cybersecurity or ethical like we we mostly use Linux. So let's understand what is Linux. So we have we have Linux, we have GNU. Okay, we have Unix. Then we have Debian. Then we have
So like we have Linux, GNU, Unix, Navian, you want to, or Genome, like there's a confusion between them. So let's clear it out. So basically GNU, uh, so some say it's, uh, it is GNU, Linux, okay. Some says it is like only Linux. So what is GNU and what is Linux? And is it GNU Linux or it is only Linux? So basically, Linux is an uh, GNU is an extensive uh, collection of free software, which can be used as an operating system or can be used in parts with other operating systems. Okay, like uh, it is an like a collection of free software which uh, can be used as an operating system or it can be used with other operating systems. Okay, the use of the complete GNU tools lead to a family of your operating system. Okay, popularly known as Linux means. So basically, GNU is an operating system. Which contains, we can say that, softwares. Okay. Collection of softwares. Like, uh, Notepad, Paint, etc. Okay, so this GNU it is a itself a, a complete operating system, or you can use it with other operating systems. Okay, then we have Linux. So basically, Linux is a kernel. Okay, so uh, Linux is a kernel. So yesterday we discussed uh, like a terminal. Okay. Shell and then OS and then kernel. So basically uh, terminal is an interface which, uh, which helps us to write a command. Okay, like it provides us an interface to write a commands. Then with the shell, shell is responsible for converting our commands into zeros and ones, into binary languages. Okay. So basically it is a type of interface. And shell. So it is responsible for converting commands into zeros and ones into binaries. Okay. Then we have the kernel, which is responsible for uh, like a that which is responsible for uh, like processing. So basically, we have terminal uh, which provides the interface where we can write the commands. Then we have the shell which converts our commands into binaries because machine only understands binaries language. Then we have the kernel which processes our commands. Whatever we like uh, give instructions uh, to the computer. Then we have the OS which is responsible for con uh,
okay which is responsible to help to help us communicate the hardware so kernel is a bridge between os and hardware okay and the uh, os is a bridge between user and the hardware okay so basically linux is a kernel which is developed by linux tools now without uh, of it, os linux uh, kernel is of no use so i combining and like combining gnu and linux we have gnu linux so basically gnu is an operating system and linux is a kernel okay uh, without uh, operating system kernel is of no use and without to get like, kernel operating system is of no use so uh, they combine gnu and linux together and we have now uh, gnu and linux which we Okay, which we uh, which we called Linux operating system. So basically, at a lower level, Linux is only a kernel, and GNU is an operating system. Okay. So. so after the gnu linux uh, it gives programmers the ability to go ahead and to write their own versions of gnu linux which we basically call distros okay or distributions which is basically differ in their uh, base software okay like so for example two distros can have different different package managers test editors like notepad or uh, and terminal application but uh, they uh, but they have the same kernel which is linux okay Okay, so we have different different distros like we have Mint, we have Arch, we have Kali, we have Pareto as. Okay, then we have uh, Fedora, Red Hat. Et. Okay, so now on the top of the Linux distros run certain type of uh, like desktop environment which is known as Gino. Okay.
Okay, so on the top of the line, it's just to run certain programs known as desktop environments, which is known as genome. So we have GNU, we have Tinex, we have distros, and then we have genome. Okay, and, uh, and these are used to change the look and feel of the uh, different different types of distros. Okay, so we have like, uh, we have popular distros, we have genome, we have unity, we have X FCE. Okay. We have first genome and then unity and XFCA. Okay. So basically, GNU is an OS, Linux is a kernel. Combination of both are GNU Linux, which is like a whole operating system. And then we have the genome, which, uh, which is the desktop environments. Then the other distros, which are derived from the uh, GNU language, okay, which are like different from their base software, but uh, but they are, you can say that they are derived from the Linux, okay. Then we have Unix and Linux. What is Unix and uh, what is Linux? So Unix, uh, Linux is basically an open source operating system, and Unix is a paid software. Okay, paid OS, which have um, changed its own copyrights. Okay. Basically, you need to paid, can say it. And Linux is open source. And like Linux have different different distros. Like uh, we have Ubuntu, which is derived from Linux. We have Red Hat, uh, Red Hat, and then we have Fedora. And for Unix, we have IBM AIX uh, and MPUX and Sun Solaris. Okay, these are the distros of the Unix. Then for the Linux, we use uh, uh, Linux. We, we we can use everywhere, like in servers, in PCs, in smartphone phones, etc. And uh, Unix, we uh, we can only use in uh, servers, workstations, and PCs. Okay, then uh, we have Linux, which is open source, means we can like uh, modify its source code or we can collaborate with other developers to modify Linux. Okay, and the Unix is, uh, is like uh, have copyrights, we cannot, uh, like we cannot, uh, even we cannot see, read its source code and uh, we, can, we cannot modify its source code. Then we have file system support, like uh, Linux supports more file system than Unix. And uh, Unix is like, uh, also supports file system, but, but less than Linux. Okay, then we have coding. Linux is a Unix clone. Basically, Linux is a Unix clone. Okay, so Linux basically is a Unix clone, okay, but it doesn't contain its software. And then Unix contain a like completely different distro, oh, oh, sorry, uh, coding environment. Then we have security, like uh, Linux provide higher security than Unix, okay. And then we have GUI, Linux is a command based and as well as it is a GUI based, okay. Then we have, okay, so this is all about units and Linux.
so unix and linux both are different from each other unix is like uh, have its own copyrights and linux is open source but basically as a whole linux is a clone of a unix okay then there's a question Now, the Ubuntu is based on Debian. Okay, so like uh, while there are hundreds of Linux distributions, only a handful of them are independent ones. Okay, like uh, which is like created from the scratch. Debian, Arch, Red Hat, these are the distros which are like, these are the biggest distros which are like created from the scratch. Okay, so Ubuntu is derived from the Debian. Okay, and then Fedora is derived from the Red Hat. Okay, which means one one uses the same APT package that the Debian uses, but uh, the the like the UI is different from uh one two's UI and other software is different from the Debian. Okay, so we can say that like one two, Kali Linux, Parrot OS, and uh, Tails OS these are all depend or drive from the Debian. Debian is a, the uh, Debian is a distro. Which is derived from the Linux. Okay, so we have the GNU, then we have the Linux, Unix, Okay, so GNU is an operating system. OS, Linux is a kernel. Okay, combination of both is GNU and Linux. Okay, then we have the Unix. Unix is like independent. Okay, so it has uh, it has both kernel and OS of its own. Then with the genome, genome uh, it is a desktop environment. Okay, then you know, Debian, which is a distribution of Linux. Okay. Red Hat, it is also a uh, distribution of also the store of Linux. Ubuntu, it is a distro of Debian. Means it is okay. It is derived from Debian. Then we have Fedora. It is a distro of, or we can say that it is derived from Red Hat. Okay. Then we have Kali Linux, which is also derived from Debian. Means 
it is debian based if parrot os see Then we have TSOS, which is also derived from Debian, and it is Debian based. Okay. Then we have Mint, which is Red Hat based, and then we have Arch, which is Distro. And etc. So we have, we have the different different operating systems for cyber security. You can use TLS OS, you can use Parrot OS, Kali OS, and Fedora, Ubuntu, Red Hat, and Debian. Okay, you can use like uh, any of these. So like the, uh, this is a like a basic clarity uh, between all these terms: GNU, Linux, and Unix. Okay, and then Gnome, you know, Debian. Okay, so TLS OS. Is most secure operating system. Okay. Uh, for the beginner, you can use Kali OX and Parrot OS. Okay, so Parrot OS is like more more like more powerful than Kali OS. Okay. So you can use any of these, it's your choice. So this is all about the basic terms of the lines. So I hope this is clear now. Everyone, it is clear. Okay, for the next session, we are going to use the Kali Linux, okay, or we can use Paratoys, like both. So let me tell you the installation process of Kali Linux. So first, you have to download VMware. Click on it. You can download it from here for Windows. Okay. Like this is VMware System Pro workstation. Okay. Like it is Pro version. So we need a key for to unlock it premium. Okay. So for the key, you can search for VMware. Sixty Pro license key GitHub. Okay, click on here. Then you can copy this one, and then you can paste it there. Okay, this will unlock your premium. Okay. 
Okay, for the Kali, the interviews go on part, uh, Kali Linux, ISO, I don't then go to Kali, and then watch your machines, it commanded, and then this one, again here, okay, click on it. And for parameters, for pairs, for this, Download where to is and then security edition. Click here in the download it in here. Okay. Now for red head. Okay, so go to download. And you can download it according uh, like to uh, click on here. At first, it will ask you to fill the form and log in, can you make the ID and log in it, and then download it from there. Okay, this is the enterprise version. Okay, so this is the Kali interface. So after I download, extract it and then file, new module, uh, open it. And then downloads. Parators and select your VMA, okay? Then click it and then open it, okay? So this is clear like any doubt from the installation part. Okay. Okay, from the last session, we will start system hacking. Okay, so your next session is going to be on 23rd of July. Okay, and timings will be okay, from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. in the evening.
Okay, the, uh, the recording session will be uploaded by today after uh, after like uh, around evening. Okay, in the evening. So the session and the previous session. It will be uploaded by today. Okay, so thank you so much for joining the session. Thank you, everyone.